We've talked a lot about a recovery machine, but now we also need to add to it our vacuum pump. The recovery machine is a great tool for what it's designed for. It's designed to move a lot of refrigerant very quickly, typically a certain amount of liquid refrigerant. So it's gonna take refrigerant out of the equipment and pump it into a recovery tank. So it's going from a high pressure here to a high pressure here. The recovery machine also will pull down into a small amount of a vacuum, typically just enough to meet our EPA standards. But when it's pulling down into a vacuum, it's a poor vacuum, a very low vacuum. It's it's not going to be deep enough for us to dehydrate the system, so we need a different tool. That's where our vacuum pump is going to come into play. The vacuum pump's job is to pull it from, say, 1 or maximum of 2 PSI down to a deep vacuum so that we dehydrate. So let's think of this vacuum pump as a dehydration tool so that we dehydrate the system. We get rid of that moisture so it does not turn to an acid. So this vacuum pump works really great for what it's designed to do. Now, this equipment is very expensive, and you need to understand how to work it. So regardless of which equipment you're working with, RTF Film, read the fabulous manual, tons of information, such as the cord size that you need to use on this. So what's the maximum length? What's the thickness of the cord you should be using? All that information's in there, as well as what type of oil, how to service this machine. It's very, very valuable information. But the vacuum pump works great at dehydration, pulling to a low vacuum. If I had to hook this up to pressure in the system, it would blow out my vacuum pump would severely damage it. If I tried using my recovery machine to pull a vacuum, I would never get low enough to truly dehydrate that system. So they each have their own individual jobs. Now make sure you know how to use that equipment. Again, I can't stress enough, RTFM, read the fabulous manualist equipment, know how it works. We even had an instructor that had 40 years of experience come to one of the schools. We had brand spanking new recovery and vacuum pump systems. He had experience working with the recovery machines, but never had experience with this particular vacuum pump. So he grabbed the vacuum pump thinking it was a recovery machine, hooked it up to the system, turned it on, and it blew apart this brand spanking new vacuum pump. It completely destroyed it. So if an instructor with 40 years experience is going to make a mistake like that, it's very easy for you to make that mistake. So make sure you're looking at the equipment, you're understanding how it's working, so that you don't make that mistake. And if you don't make that mistake, everything goes a lot smoother. Your boss is happier, you're happier. You make a mistake like you're burning up a very expensive vacuum pump, your boss is unhappy, which means you're ultimately gonna be unhappy. This is another reason employers are requiring you to have your own equipment because a lot of people don't take care of this very expensive equipment. They don't take care of this equipment. It's being damaged. The employer gets tired of having to spend all the money replacing it all the time. So they say, look, we're going to pay you a little bit more, but you're responsible for your own equipment. So you're seeing more and more companies now requiring this. When I started in the field, the company always supplied the recovery machine and the vacuum pump. Nowadays, more and more companies are requiring you to supply your own equipment. So make sure you check with your employer to see if they're going to provide this equipment and whether they're providing it or it's your own equipment. You want to make sure that you inspect it, know how to work with it, and you take really good care of it. This equipment will last you a very long time if you service, maintain, and use it properly. Never stop learning.